Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Lundra. On the previous episode, we explored the walls surrounding the Lake Palace, and today we'll be starting off by exploring the hedge maze in sort of the center courtyard right outside the palace proper. Uh, so our first goal will be to hit these two switches, which will eventually enable us uh, to disable these two little chalice barriers here. Uh, these are what control the lock on the door before we can access the interior of the palace and finally confront Melzus. Uh, so you can see there on the center, there are these three gates uh, that control access uh, to the various parts of the hedge maze. So our goal will be to find three keys, the first of which is right here. Uh, the only really challenging part of this maze is the fact that these little uh, paths through the walls in the hedge maze are sometimes kind of difficult to see, especially that one, which goes left to right. Uh, any of them that go left to right, I think, are pretty hard to see. Uh, and they're, as you can see, they're only one way. So you have to find the one that goes the way you want, uh, and you have to find a way back out, uh, since they're only one directional uh, as you explore the maze. But first things first, unlocking that first door gives us access to the fourth and final Magic Seed and the 50th and final Gilded Falcon, meaning we have almost every collectible in the game now, except for the item that we get for returning all the Gilded Falcons and the 50th and final Life Vessel. Uh, the Gilded Falcons we can actually exchange uh, right now, of course, we can go back through the way we came. Or we can hit this switch which unlocks this door up here in the upper right, which gives us access to a teleporter back to the well in Anoa Village. Uh, obviously that door meant that even, this, even if we had used this teleporter before, we couldn't have gotten to the Lake Palace. The problem is, as you saw right there, it actually puts you uh, in such a place where the teleporter is between you and the ladder out of the well, so if you walk towards the ladder, like you probably instinctively would want to do uh, as soon as you see it, you'll just walk on the teleporter again and wind up back here. So why don't we just go ahead and finish exploring the hedge maze? Yeah, you actually have to use that key to get out of here because there's no way out any other way. Pretty annoying, kind of like a, a waste of a key like that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I can't get in there to get that chest over there, but we can go through this uh, wall, a little uh, hole in the wall here, and eventually uh, access this switch if we can get the jumping just right. Yes, Alundra. Alundra is jumping physics. And access a full heal. So having access to both a teleporter back to Anoa and a full heal here means that this is sort of the halfway point uh, of the overall uh, Lake Palace experience. Uh, and this will give us a, a base of operations to go back to if we ever really need to heal or to go back and buy stuff. Uh, of course, since I know where all the chests are in the Lake Palace, uh, that'll probably never happen, but if you're playing this as a walkthrough and you happen to need uh, a little break, uh, this is how you escape. So yeah, uh, so we will be revisiting the walls, and if you've watched the previous episode, you probably saw some of these chests as we were walking around the outside of the palace. This is how you get there. There are some uh, pathways out of the hedge maze onto the walls of the kept palace uh, that allow us to access the last few chests and pick up the keys that we need uh, to finish exploring. See, there's another trick. Uh, the break in the hedge maze wall that gets us, uh, that allows us to escape after picking up that final key, yeah, uh, is actually behind the chest and you have to walk up on the chest, uh, uh, to escape that part of the hedge maze. So, we've got a fourth key, and what does that unlock? Uh, this fourth door here in the lower left-hand side, uh, which brings us pretty close to being able to hit that second switch. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, the first one is super easy to find. Uh, which is great from a design perspective, because it, uh, it teaches you what your objective is for this area by giving you one of the two switches right away, and then you have to explore the remainder of the hedge maze uh, to find the second switch. But you don't sort of wander around trying to wondering what you have to do. It ties immediately uh, to uh, chalices, uh, which guard the door uh, into your objective from the area. So yeah, so yeah, can't go back through that way, but of course, thankfully... Uh, the hole in the wall that allows you back into the courtyard proper is right next to it. So right. Uh, so now that we've finished the hedge maze area, uh, let's go ahead and give it a second try to go back to Anoa Village and eventually, oops, let's go for a swim. Sure, why not? To go back to Merrick's shop and exchange our Gilded Falcons for that last prize. And boy, is it worth it. So here we are. Uh, let's climb out of the well just to show where we are. I believe now is a good time to save your game, since the one thing that is missing from this little checkpoint area is a save. Of course, like half of Vanoa Village is destroyed, but conveniently our house is totally fine. And of course, Merrick's shop is totally fine. I think he barely had any idea that Anoa Village got burned to the ground. He certainly doesn't talk about it. You'd think that since there's only one village uh, on this entire island, it would be kind of a big deal. 
Anyway, yeah, 50 Gilded Falcons. They don't show you what the relic is, because it's supposed to be a surprise. But it is, in fact, the last item that fills in uh, a hole in your uh, weapon equipment bar. So yeah, he angered the gods with his greed. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, if, I w as if he wasn't greedy enough having access to all these amazing relics and keeping them from us. Anyway, we've now got the spirit wands. You can hear that buzzing noise as me uh, trying to use the attack button. This weapon has no actual attack, so what's the point of having it? Uh, we'll find out a little bit later because there aren't actually uh, any enemies to fight for quite a little while in this dungeon. Alright, so we can uh, walk right in and pretty much the first room we can confront Melzus almost immediately. So here we are in the Lake Shrine interior. We can walk past these six suspiciously similar chalices to the ones that lock the door to the outside. And yep, this is Melzus' chamber. Time for the final boss? Maybe? Sort of? Well, this lab episode isn't labeled final, so you can imagine there's still a little bit of work left to do. But this is the first time in the game that we actually come face to face uh, with Melzus not in a dream. So it is kind of a big deal. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why he says we have no- he has no time to ponder her action- their actions. I mean, he's just been sitting here trapped into the lake palace for- for, I would imagine, like a thousand years, right? Like, he doesn't seem to have had any problems influencing the outside world in the last few days. But anyway, so these machines, this is the first time you'll be seeing these. Uh, apparently they control the flow of time here in the lake palace. One can imagine this was probably part of a mechanism that trapped Melzes here, but it doesn't seem to be working as intended because he seems to have complete control over them himself. So you can see a little uh, switch moving up and down on a moving platform there. When he activate, deactivates these machines, those switches stop moving. Uh, so time has completely stopped for everybody except us, Melzus, uh, and a handful of switches which are required to progress very conveniently for gameplay purposes. Yeah, see, even the enemies stop moving. I think they don't do any damage to you. Certainly you can't do any damage to them, which is part of why uh, there won't be any explicit confrontations with enemies for quite some time. There are also a large number of puzzles in the game, I don't know why the game is showing you this one in particular, which are non-functional before we activate those two machines. Uh, which is sort of interesting. This dungeon is really complicated, and just knowing that these uh, two machines are the first objective for you before you can actually uh, complete the dungeon, I guess is a nice way of giving you a chance to explore the area before things get a little bit more complicated. Yeah, even the uh, moving spiked balls just become stationary obstacles, which is a good point and a bad point. And yeah, he also kicks us out. And activates six more chalices for us to find. So, we have a twofold objective, the first of which is to activate those two machines, which restore the flow of time uh, here in the Lake Palace, and the second of which will be uh, to disable these six chalice locks. And just as a forewarning, you cannot disable any of those chalice locks until you have activated the two machines that restore the flow of time. So, let's start. Uh, yeah, you can see there's a switch and two barrels and a chest. The chest we can reach, but the switch and the two barrels are actually suspended in midair. Again, it's pretty hard to tell because of the crummy perspective that Alundra has. But they'll fall to the ground and become accessible once uh, uh, time is restored, uh, allowing us to complete yet another puzzle here. Uh, so we'll be doing a lot of revisiting of a handful of the rooms uh, to pick up a few treasure chests and to access a few switches. So here we are in the library. Uh, the chests in general, aside from the ones that contain keys, aren't really necessary because I have a full inventory, uh, and because I have every item in the game, I won't really need to use a lot of healing items. Uh, but if you're using this as a walkthrough and you've decided not to use some of the more overpowered items in the game, you might want to know where all these things are. So I'll try to open all the chests I run into. There's even more scattered around here than I think I show in this LP. Uh, but what I do show should be enough, especially since you have a teleporter back to Enola, and if you really, really need something, uh, you can buy it from Lurby Shop or from Naomi Shop where everything is free. Yep, see there are these Roper guys here. I think this is the first time we've seen these enemies too. Uh, but we'll have to wait to see their combat abilities until uh, time is restored. Yeah, these statues, I don't know how you'd know this, but they can be broken down. One for an herb. Later you'll actually have to do this to progress in the dungeon. In fact, you have to do it right now, not necessarily break them down, but to stand on top of them. They have this really weird 4x4 uh, hitbox, and you can actually stand on top of them in a place that looks like you're standing like way off from their shoulder, so that'll come up a little bit later. This is an interesting puzzle. You have to move this pillar just up enough that you can move this one back to the left, and then go up and move this one back to the right without it being so far up that you can't access it because it's too close to the ladder. 
Uh, it's a little bit interesting and a nice sort of uh, divergence from Zelda-style puzzles where everything moves in either tile or half-tile increments. So yeah, I keep the Spirit Wand on because I'm like really excited to show off exactly what it does. Uh, but most of the time, uh, especially since there are no enemies, I need things like the the sword or the flail to activate switches and to break things down. Uh, so I have to admit, uh, this was not the smartest choice to keep the spirit wand on all the time. Yeah, so I, I equipped it as I was walking up the stairs and then immediately I had to put the sword back on to hit this first switch. So even though there are two machines and they seem to have independent switches, you actually have to hit both switches on both machines to restore both of them at the same time. It's not something you can do partially. Uh, and as you recall, both of them have switches that are moving up and down uh, via moving platforms, which means we'll at some point have to go back to both machine rooms uh, to unlock uh, the doors that those switches unlock. So there is a lot of backtracking in this dungeon. Again, it's pretty useful that the game gives you the chance to look at things when it's a bit simpler, when like 90% of the puzzles are actually not active. I think it's a pretty useful uh, tool for not getting you uh, too mixed up uh, as you're exploring, and it builds a little bit of dramatic tension. Alright, so we'll be seeing a lot of this room. So we've explored the right-hand side, uh, and hit that first switch. And yeah, here's the dining room. I guess we could grab a snack? I don't know. I like that this dungeon in general is very organic. It's a nice counterpoint to some of the dungeons that we've been exploring in the Lunger previously that look like just interconnected series of caves and ruins, that this one actually looks like a palace where people live which is fitting with the lore of the game. Uh, yeah, so this is where it comes into play that you can stand on top of these statues uh, in a place where it looks like you're not on top of them at all in order to make the jump over to this platform where the strength tonic is. Of course, we don't need a strength tonic, but in case you wanted to know where they are, sure, there it is. Now, strength tonics only restore like 10 health points and enemies, even if you have the best armor, do like seven to eight health points. So like herbs and strength tonics are almost completely useless and barely recover the damage that you take from a single hit, but, you know, whatever. I mean, better than nothing, right? Anyway, we're gonna make a lot of use of some barrels here. Thankfully, the flow of time being stopped has not stopped us from being able to use uh, all the barrels. First thing we have to do is to hit that switch, one of the handful of switches that actually does something in the game right now. Uh, and then that switch actually does the same thing as this switch over here, I think. Or rather, you have to hit them both to unlock uh, the door moving forward. And that gives us the uh, ability to take this barrel with us. I think we need one of them, uh, and the other one has to be used to give us a stairs uh, into this area proper. So we've got to make a little barrel ladder here. Yeah, it's a little bit finicky getting it exactly right. Uh, we can hold that uh, switch down with a barrel, but not necessary. Uh, and again, pretty annoying that the uh, spike ball stays stationary because it's really easy to hit your head on them uh, as you're jumping over to the, <clears throat> uh, to the door to this room containing the second time machine. Yep, so after hitting the second switch, uh, time is now restored, and we can begin uh, the final objective of this uh, Lake Palace, uh, which is to unlock the six chalices uh, that uh, keep us from entering Melzus's palace proper. Alright, so we can begin with that objective immediately uh, by hitting that first switch on the moving platform and jumping off this ledge. We can find the first of the six switches and begin exploring the remainder of the, ca the castle. Uh, there are a lot of points in this uh, dungeon exploration where I unlock doors more or less just to have uh, the ability to go backwards if I have to. Uh, since I'm sort of following some walkthrough notes, uh, I don't usually use the doors like that one down there unless they're immediately useful to get back to somewhere I need to be. Uh, it isn't necessarily the most efficient way uh, to make a beeline uh, between the six switches, but it will be useful if you're exploring this uh, palace in your own right uh, for your own reasons, just to see what everything does. Alright, so the, ba the downside of enabling time, besides uh, allowing the enemies to move again, is that some of the traps, uh, which were uh, previously non-functional, uh, now function. Wonderful. Alright, so we want to weigh down that switch, and now we've got uh, this, these uh, switches here, which I think we haven't seen since the lizard hideout. Uh, but they're pretty easy to activate uh, with the four, with the, using the bow. And by doing this, we get a Magic Elixir, which is a pretty awesome item. Uh, but we, again, really don't need it. I already have one, and they're only 100 gold, I think, at Lurvy Shop. And I've got 9,897, so... Uh... All right, enemies, great. So these gargoyles will be my first opportunity to try out the Spirit Wands. 
Uh, but I'd rather use the fire book, because that's awesome. And check it out! My magic meter is not going down at all. So that's why the spirit wand is so amazing. It gives you infinite magic. Uh, the implications of that I think you'll start to understand as I continue to play this uh, dungeon. Alright, to solve this puzzle we have to literally use our heads. Right, so we can use uh, a lunge's sprite to stop that platform from going all the way back to where it started, and then use a bomb to reactivate the switch and reach the second of the six chalice switches. Awesome. Alright, and these guys apparently respawn every time we get a cutscene, so we get to kill them again, and we'll show off now! So we also get infinite water magic, and remember that part of the function of the water magic is to fully refill your health. So not only do we have access to infinite magic, we also have access to uh, a full heal at will. So yeah, getting the spirit wand is completely overpowered, which is fitting for an item that requires you to get 50 gilded falcons across the entire game, many of which are missable. Alright, so the next thing we have to do is to put barrels in each of these switches, and use the pillar to weigh down the fifth one, and then use ourselves to weigh down the, switch, the sixth one. Now this is pretty hard to do. Uh, you're on a time limit, it's not really obvious, but eventually the switches will pop up out of the out of the ground, making it more difficult to solve the puzzle and making it impossible to move the pillar on. And all that work for an herb. whoop de doo Wonderful. Hey! So we get a little bit of use out of almost everything in this dungeon, it's kind of like a final exam. We can use the magic bean to jump across this gap. I don't know if the bean grows while time is stopped. I don't think it ever really came up. It might not be possible to get there because of these doors that block access to some of the corridors. Uh, but anyway, that's most of the way through the final dungeon. All we have left to do is to find the last four chalice switches, uh, and we will do that on the next and final episode of Let's Play Lundra. I hope you enjoyed today, and I'll see you then.